just look at this camera. It is gorgeous. When looking back at the F series of cameras, the Nikon F, F2, and even the F3 are classically beautiful and iconic cameras. I like the looks of the F4 and the F5, but in my opinion, they look more like functional tools and maybe don't have that timeless look. But I feel like the F6 has the updated classic look and it is destined to be a timelessly beautiful camera. Just look at it from every angle. I love it. But it isn't just the looks that make this camera the ultimate film SLR. One of the things that is really great about the F6 is the data back. This sets it apart from all my other film cameras. When I started photography with film cameras, I used to write down the settings of my shots in a small notebook. The F6 records all of that information for you and you can see it on the screen on the back of the camera. It has enough internal memory to store 31 rolls of 36 exposure film. There is shutter speed and aperture along with the date and time, but also other information like exposure compensation, the lens you used and what focal length the image was captured at, the metering mode and flash information. You can use the insanely expensive and difficult to find Nikon MV1 to download the data, or you can try a third party device like the Meta 35. Both of these options only work with computers that have older operating systems, so that is something else you will need to navigate. I have the Meta 35 connector and software, and it works well. One of the things that I like about it is when I download the data from the F6, it doesn't automatically delete that data from the camera. When you use the MV1, it will delete the data from the F6 after you download it. The interface of the Meta 35 software is pretty simple to navigate and it works with some of my older cameras like the Nikon F5, F100 and F90. Alternatively, you can take a picture of the back of the F6 and then allow your phone to recognize the text and copy and paste that into another document. It isn't perfect, but it works pretty well. The data back is also where you can set the custom settings for the F6. Anyone who has set the custom settings for the F5 will realize how much better the F6 is than the F5 in this regard. The F5 has a number for the setting and you have to have a sheet which helps you to decode which setting is which. It is so much easier to understand the custom settings on the screen of the F6. Those of you who are used to digital cameras will find the F6 much easier than the F5. Connected with the information that you can get about each shot is the F6 ability to imprint information about the shot in the space between each frame. You could do this with the F5, but you have to purchase a different back for the camera. I like that it's built into the F6. There is a lot more information on the back of the camera than what is printed in between the frames, but it is nice to be able to look at your negatives and easily see the settings for the images. One of the things I've done with all of my cameras going back to the Nikon F100 is customize the command dials so that I use the back command dial to change the aperture. I like using my thumb on the back dial instead of my middle finger on the front dial to change the aperture because it is easier for me. It really frustrated me that the F5 didn't allow me to switch the aperture command dial to the rear. Capturing images with the F6 is fantastic. It feels perfect in my hands. It is a really great size and really comparable to modern DSLRs like the Nikon D850. Although it is a bit thinner from front to back when compared to the D850 and the F6 feels slightly better in my hands. In terms of weight, Nikon gives the weight of each camera without batteries. The F4 and the F6 can both be used without the optional bottom grips, while the F5 has the built-in grip, so you have more options for controlling the weight of the F4 and F6. Without a grip and batteries, the F6 weighs 975 grams, while the F4 weighs 1,090 grams. The F5 weighs 1,210 grams, but we don't use these cameras without batteries, and one of the advantages the F6 has is that it uses lighter CR123A batteries instead of AA batteries. So with batteries, my F6 weighs around 1,010 grams, so the batteries only add 35 grams, while my F4 weighs 1,170 grams, so those AA batteries add 80 grams and my F5 weighs 1,390 grams, so those eight AA batteries add an additional 180 grams. So, with the extra grip and AA batteries, the F6 was actually the heaviest of the three, weighing in at 1,425 grams. So the grip and eight AA batteries added 450 grams. 
that makes the F6 almost one and a half times as heavy as it is without the grip. There is an option of using an older EN-EL4A with the F6 when the MB40 is attached, and that combination weighs in at 1,415 grams, so it only saves you about 10 grams, while my F4 with grip and batteries was 1,390 grams, which is the same as the F5 with batteries. Although, something about the design of the F6 makes it feel lighter than the F4 and the F5. While we are talking about the additional external grip, when the MB40 grip is attached, you can boost the frame rate of the F6 to 8 frames a second. But to be honest, I don't use that type of frame rate with film now that I have digital cameras. When I'm shooting film, it is all about slowing down and not rapid fire photography. I do like the vertical shutter release button and the extra multi-selector on the MB40, but I tend to leave the MB40 at home to save weight and keep the camera lighter. The F6 is Nikon's first professional F model SLR that doesn't have an interchangeable prism. Honestly, this doesn't bother me at all. The look of the F6 prism reminds me of the original Nikon F prism and I love it. I get that the different prisms all have their uses, but I am personally fine without the option of changing prisms. And I do love the look of the F6 prism compared to the F5 and F4, which are much chunkier. The F6 has 11 focus points, nine of which are cross type. This brings me back to the simplicity of film SLR cameras. My first camera had one focus point in the middle of the frame, so when cameras started having more than one, I was blown away. It is a very different world now with mirrorless cameras having focus points that cover the entire frame corner to corner, but the 11 focus points suit me fine for the types of photography I'm doing with the F6. Another great thing about the F6 is that it is compatible with my lenses. I don't have a ton of really old lenses, but I do have some for my Nikon F and F2. Some older lenses need to be converted to work with the F6, but it works with lenses like my super sharp 28mm f2.8 AIS lens. All I need to do is put the lens information into the camera's bank of lenses, and then the data for the lens will be used when capturing images. The F6 also works with D lenses like my 16mm f2.8 D lens and with G lenses that don't have an aperture ring like my 58mm f1.4 G lens. Finally, the F6 can take pictures with E lenses that have an electronically controlled aperture like my 70-200 f2.8 E lens, but the lens can only be used at its widest aperture as the F6 can't change the aperture, so E lenses are most limited on the F6. All of these lenses still give me data on the screen on the back of the camera and print the data between the frames of my photos. Finally, Nikon says a lot about the F6 being quiet and to be honest, now that I'm used to silent mirrorless cameras calling any mode on the F6 or any SLR camera quiet is kind of funny. I compared the sound of the F5 to the F6, which were both in quiet mode so you could hear the difference. The F6 is definitely quieter. So here are the sound waves of the F6 and the F5 side by side. When we look at the intensity of the spikes, more of the F5 sound spikes are longer and therefore louder. The other thing is that the length of time the F6 makes sound is quite a bit shorter than the F5. There are 7 significant spikes of sound in my recording for the F6 compared to 11 spikes of sound for the F5. Like I said, quieter but not exactly quiet. When it comes to the metering system of the F6, it improves on the F5's 3D color matrix metering, which takes into account the color of the scene. This was rare for film SLR cameras as they usually only looked at brightness, but not color. It has a scene detection algorithm, which takes into account all the things that you would expect like brightness, distance to subject, the focus point you have selected, and the color in the scene. Nowadays, this is pretty standard in modern digital cameras, but all I know is that it is incredibly accurate and works well for me. When it comes to my cameras, the Nikon F6 truly is the ultimate film camera. I get that it isn't cheap. It isn't always easy to find one either, but it is amazing to use if you get the chance. Everything about it feels right. It feels at home in my hands. It performs as you would expect. I just love this camera. If you like the content I am creating, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much.